Hey folks, Josh Zawino from ZQ here. Today we're here to talk about the thermodynamics of a smoker. Alright, so before we understand how the chamber is heated, we're going to have a quick recap on how a reverse flow offset works. We start by building a fire here in the firebox. The heat then transfers through the chamber by travelling underneath the solid baffle inside the chamber. Note the slight angle of the baffle. Then the heat passes into the main chamber, vortexing through until it reaches the stack, at which point it is expelled out the top. Alright, we're going to get a bit scientific here, but I think it's worth understanding what's going on inside the smoker. So we're going to talk about the Bernoulli principle, which predicts that a decrease in pressure is associated with an increase of speed. That is to say, the relationship between pressure and speed is inversely proportional. Breaking this down, this means that the air passing over the stack creates a high pressure right at the tip of the stack. In turn, that higher pressure causes a greater rate of draw through the chamber, which also in turn draws more air through the vents in the firebox. Understanding this principle lets us know that controlling the opening of the stack offers the greatest influence on the temperature control of the smoker whilst giving off the fuel's negatives. In this case, we have the top stack completely open and the bottom stack half closed. This means that the fire burning in the firebox is having the air restricted from it, lowering the combustion rate. This will have the same effect on the overall temperature as the next case, but remember when the fire isn't burning efficiently, we are imparting bad smoke on our proteins. In the next case, Take note that the bottom vents of the firebox are completely open and the top stack is closed down halfway. What is happening here is that the fire can be fed whatever oxygen it can get so that it can burn efficiently. But, because the stack is closed down, it is restricting the amount of oxygen drawn through the vents as well as slowing the rate that the convective heat is being drawn through the main chamber. Now it's time to talk about those three different types of heat. The first heat being convective heat. This is the main source of heat we commonly associate with smokers. That is, first and foremost, the smoke and heat that is produced at the source of the fire and drawn through the main chamber. This also relates to the next type of heat, commonly known as evaporative heat. Evaporative heat is actually a form of convective heat. In this case of my reverse flow offset smoker, I'm referring to the water pan sitting in the bottom of the chamber. Arguably, the evaporation from the fluids does have a bearing on the moisture content of the proteins in the cooker, but I haven't found this to be the case. The primary reason I use a water pan is to equalize the chamber temperatures. Least but not last, the next type of heat is radiant heat. This is why our offset smokers are so heavy, thick and bulky. The same applies to any smoker just in varying forms. The heat source over time will warm the outside of the chamber and produce an even temperature which will cook whatever's in the chamber. Similar to a frying pan. The frying pan itself isn't the source of heat but is being transferred through another source. So now we know about the different heat sources and the Bernoulli principle, it's time to put it all into practice, use our knowledge to create the best possible environment for our meat to cook. We're going to break this down into three core concepts which can be applied to any smoker. The first being controlling the fire. Creating an appropriate amount of fire will allow you to minimise the control that you need over the airflow. Control the air. Once you have established a good fire, now you want to dial those temperatures in. The easiest way to do this is by changing the vents. Remember you want to keep your fire burning efficiently, so as I suggested, by using the knowledge that we have of the Bernoulli principle, we're going to use that top stack vent. Lastly, stop looking. The more time you have the chamber door open, the more heat that you're taking away from the surface temperature of the meat. Never forget, if you're looking, you ain't cooking. Alright folks, I hope this has helped. If you like what you see, hit the like button. If you love it, please hit that subscribe button. If you have any suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave them down in the comment section.